Welcome back to another episode of Hoop Sense. I'm your host, Trey Edwards, joined always by Mike Z. It's good to be back. Good to be back. Episode two. Episode two. Feel good. It feels really good, man. You know, uh, we released the first episode to the world. Everybody was, you know, we got some good feedback. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I feel famous already. It feels like we're... Uh, <laughs> Rocket ship, baby. The endorsements are rolling <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, that's right. You can't go grocery shopping on a Sunday. <laughs> no, that's right. A lot of like uh, hats covering the eyes, getting recognized everywhere. This is fame, bro. <laughs> this is really fame. This is good. Man, so let's just jump right into it, man. James Harden becomes number two all-time three-point shooter. It kind of feels it feels weird to see him pass Ray Allen. Not in like a bad way. I just think of Ray Allen like it was so it took Steph so long to yeah. move their way up. It felt like it was an untouchable record. Right, exactly. Sure. And then for James Harden to move to move up, just it's kind of it's kind of wild. And I mean, he's still got years left to chuck. You know? Like they're pad, they like literally pass Reggie Miller and Ray Allen. Like, yeah. think about that. It's wild. But to be fair, let's be honest. The game has changed. Sure. They're shooting at a high volume clip. Guys are shooting. The norm of three point field goal attempts are like 11. Yeah. I was seeing something uh, last night during the uh, Lakers game. They were like, Austin Reeves, I think, has been averaging nine threes mm -hmm. a game. Like, that's, I mean, even you just like rewind five years from uh, five years ago, no one was doing that. Or yeah. definitely not somebody like Austin Reeves. With no disrespect, to Austin. No disrespect. But, yeah. I mean, we we're understanding the basketball inflation. That's right. Yes, that's right. right. Basketball inflation. Um, shouts to James Harden, Compton's own. Um, that's a hell of an accomplishment. And when it goes all down, and you walk away, Hall of Famer and second all time. Yeah. Because I don't think he's gonna catch Steph. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Steph's yeah. got like I don't think he's gonna catch, yeah. I don't think he's gonna catch Steph, but you could be that's a number two is a great way to brag about things, especially Absolutely. in this in this great game. Absolutely. Uh rest in peace, Bob Love. Mm. Bob Love, you know, uh lost his battle with cancer, mm -hmm. NBA legend. Uh, you know, uh, we send our hearts and love to the family, um, our condolences. Um, NBA great. Yeah. A legend. Yeah. What about Norm Powell, man? We talked about Norm Powell in the first episode. Norm Powell's playing crazy. Yes. He has all-star numbers. It's it like I, you had mentioned that. And I was like, all-star, really? And then you look at those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He's scoring like efficiently. He's putting up big numbers. Uh and the Clippers, again, we kind of talked about it uh last or last week. Mm -hmm. They're staying competitive. Like they're not still, you know, like a few games over 500 like they were the last time we talked, but they're still like feisty. And without Kawhi, Norm just kind of taken over. And Harden, like we, we mentioned, has been doing well, but he hasn't been like peak Harden, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Norm is like, I got you. He's like, I think the thing is, too, is like when you're given an opportunity, either you're going to take advantage of it mm -hmm. or you're going to just let it slip through your hands. And like Norm understands he's been waiting again years for this moment. Mm -hmm. He's played with Dame and CJ in Portland. He's played in Toronto with Kawhi and uh, Pascal Siakam. And then also having to play with James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George last season, he finally gets the opportunity to step up. And he has been carrying the load for the Clippers alongside uh, James Harden. Yeah, and I'll be honest, like I, th I thought Norm would always be kind of that score that comes off the bench. If he's hot, you let him ride. And, and that was it. And to see his role evolve and for him to like flourish in it has been has been cool to see. I I did not think that he not that I didn't think he could do it, but I didn't know if he would get another opportunity to do something like this. And he had he's like absolutely taken advantage of it. Now, as we're talking about this, we got news that Norman Powell's gonna miss a couple games. Yeah. We don't want to do the Paolo thing. We went too crazy on Paolo, uh, no. MV Paolo. I still stand by MV Paolo, by the way. Nothing has changed. <laughs> but, you know, he went down right after we recorded. So Norman Powell's gonna be missing a couple games. And hopefully he can continue to pick up where he's playing when he returns to the court. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, Russell Westbrook, 200 career triple doubles, most all time. That's crazy. 200 is so many. And now he's doing it off the bench. Like You can still take him out of the starting lineup. He's like, I can still get you a triple double. And in a win, in Denver needed a win. After Jokic has missed the last three games and in the two previous to last night, they did not look good. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not look good at all. And for him to come on and uh, just like give them the boost that they needed so they could get that big cup game win uh, last night. But yeah, 200 triple doubles. Man, Russ got to wear the depoy chain in the <laughs> locker room. <laughs> you know, dog. Yeah. A lot of people have been counting Russ out, man. I've been, you know, again, love Russ. He plays passion. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you you got to think about the passion that he brings to the game. You know what I mean? Uh, that we haven't seen. If you the late great Kobe Bryant said, if he can compare anybody to the mental approach, the 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 toughness, and all those things, Russell Westbrook would be that guy. He's one of his favorite players to watch, and that's what Denver needs so much Absolutely. in this drastic situation. So I remember Oscar Robertson's record, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember when LeBron got drafted, everybody was like. You know, this dude could be could average a tri triple double, and it sounded crazy. Right, like yo, we're never in our lifetime ever going to see a player average a triple double. And then Ru Westbrook did it twice. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's nuts. And I and I feel like people discredit it at times because they were like, oh, it was like inflated stats, blah blah blah. It, you can't take that away. I mean, that's an incredible feat. And I mean, you mentioned LeBron, and he's someone who hasn't done it. You know, like, and he was the one, like you were saying, that would be the guy that could do it. And for Russ to do it for a season, not once, but twice, is nuts. And just, again, at, like, this advanced stage in his career, in, like, limited minutes, still putting up those numbers off the bench. He's, uh, you said a dog. Dude's a dog. Fans hate everything. We, we're not going to, like, normalize the triple-double. Yeah. The triple-double is hard to do. If triple-double yeah. was easy, everybody could do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I seen Haley, Haley Van Lith. Mm -hmm. crying about getting her first double-double. Yeah. Like, so think about that. It's a cool stat. It's a cool stat. But yeah. also, it's one thing to stat pad, quote-unquote, rebounds. Right. But you have to make sure people score on the other end to get those 10 assists. That's right. And that's hard to do. Yeah. And he's been, and he, again, really good at setting people up. Nobody gets on the break like Russ, mm -hmm. too, like in transition. He's just just a machine running down the court. And he gets to, he gets to find easy dimes because people run with him. We appreciate you, Legend. Keep doing your thing. Another L.A. guy. There we go. Uh, Send, seeing the trend. Kyan Anthony yeah. is signing with the Syracuse Orangemen. Yeah, dude, the nostalgia of that for me, like it just brings me right back uh, to like when I was getting into college basketball because that was when Melo was going on his runs at Syracuse. So to see his son now going there is crazy. It makes when, me feel you very You want to know what else is crazy? He sat on his very, very couch. That's right. With Angel Reese. That's right. In the same studio. Uh, shout outs to our studio, yeah. WTF <laughs> Media. You know what I mean? Uh, but what do you expect from Kyan Anthony going into Syracuse, knowing that his father won a national championship as a freshman? Yeah, I wonder, I, I feel like the spotlight on Syracuse hasn't been as bright as mm -hmm. it was when uh, Mello was there. So I'm sure there will be uh, extra lights on it now, but I don't know if the pressure is still going to be there. Like, say it would have been 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, and I'm not as plugged in with college basketball, so maybe that's not 100% accurate, but it does feel like it'd be a little bit less than of, of like the intensity than maybe it would have been 10 to 15 years ago. But I do still, I mean, like, it's super exciting. I mean, Syracuse must be thrilled that they- Yeah, absolutely. Here. I mean, he's a, he's a good get. I'm not sure if he's still number one in the, in the state, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, of New York. But um, good player, very aggressive. Um, I think he still has a little bit more room to grow. Um, as far as that and still figuring out what position he's going to play on the next level. Um, but he was it was down to USC, Syracuse, and Auburn. Wow. Auburn got knocked out, you know, and then it was between SC and Syracuse. Yeah. Now, I would have liked him to be in SC. Yeah. But, you know, Syracuse, I think he he's still going to be able to have a way to blaze his own journey and path and things yeah. of that nature. And being in New York, we get to maybe enjoy it a little bit more than if he was not in Syracuse. That's know? true. We'll get, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna make games. it up there, but no, no, no. You know. I, when he comes to the garden, when he yes. comes to the garden. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll get not, some local games. Yeah, I'm not trying I'm not trying to get up to Syracuse. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Everyone's favorite subject team of the week That's right you have the De detroit pistons tell me more man i my the thing that i was so excited about with detroit heading into this season uh is what were what was the young core gonna look like mm -hmm. because they didn't really like gel last year i know there's a lot of weird stuff going on uh both with like the roster and with what was going on with the coaching mm -hmm. and now like we're getting to see cade like B. Cade Cunningham. He's yeah. healthy. He's been, he had like a, three triple doubles in a row, I think, speaking of the triple double stat. Jaden Ivey has been like a revelation this year. And now I think that was like the biggest concern for Detroit. Like, we're not trying to get to the playoffs this year, but do we have a young core moving forward that makes sense? And that backcourt's working of Cade and Ivy. They can play together. They can stunt them. So, like, Ivy can take some take over uh, the offense while Cade's on the bench. And they've just been fun. They've been playing a lot of close games. They've I think they're 7-9 and nine right now. I mean, when's the last time Detroit's had seven wins before, like, the Thanksgiving break? 
It's right? been a, it's been a minute. It's been a, a, a struggling organization, but uh, hats off to uh, Coach Bickerstaff. Mm -hmm. Um, he changed the culture. You know, I poked fun at him saying, you know, about guys wearing hoodies and jewelry right. and practice and things of that nature. Um, but it matters. And now he's trying to reshift the culture and make sure that these guys are professionals in their space, but then also um, on and off the court. And these guys are, you know, getting behind him and basically um, trusting his leadership. And it's showing. Yeah, and I, I think the veteran presence that they brought in this offseason, too, of uh, Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., and uh, Malik Beasley has also helped, too. Like, just bringing some adults in the room that have, like, won some games. Uh, it's just, like, a good mix. And they just got good news that Asar Thompson is going to be uh, back. He's cleared for basketball Welcome activities. Back, Asar. Oh, man, that's huge. Because that was a scary, that was, like, a scary injury Absolutely. when he was shutting down. And so, good to see that he's going to be back. And, again, like, I'm not saying Detroit's going to go out there and be, like, the five seed in the East. Although the East is kind of crazy, so who knows. But... But they're fun. They're a fun team. Did you think that Tobias Harris would be on a better record <laughs> roster team than the Philadelphia 76ers? I bet nobody's sleeping better than Tobias Harris right now, right? He has got to feel good. He doesn't have to deal with everybody on him and like the Philadelphia fan base. Please don't come at me. Uh, but I, and now he gets, yeah, Detroit. Detroit has five more wins than the Sixers right now. We'll talk about that a yeah. little later in the show. God. But that's, that, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Golden State Warriors. Best in the West, mm -hmm. 10 and 3. As I heard uh, Draymond shout out Jerry Stackhouse and how he's been challenging in Stackhouse's defense versus Draymond's defense. Right. You know, like normally we would praise Draymond for being the, 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 the catalyst of the Warriors' defense. Hey, it doesn't work without him. Jerry Stackhouse has brought a different type of identity that has taken this to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Man, they're like, I was so impressed by that game against the Boston Celtics. I know that's like a, a week or two ago now, but the way that that defense is like an amoeba, just like flying around, there is so interchangeable and just like a toughness that, you know, was a staple to those teams. We always think about Steph and Clay, and then when KD was there, just like knocking down shot after shot and, and just putting up big offensive numbers. But their defense is really what would carry that team to championships. And to see them still do it is just so impressive. And I have to take like a huge L on, on Buddy. I did not see Buddy coming in and doing what he's doing and going to say, I mean, he's always, he's always been a shooter, could shoot anywhere. But with what was happening in Philly, uh, and then even at the tail end of his stretch at Indiana, I didn't think that he could come in and do what he's doing right now, but he's shooting like 50% from three on like volume and every single night he's coming off the bench and dropping 20. It's crazy. Yeah, that, but that Golden State team, uh, again, they won the first five games or whatever, not the first five, but early in the season. And it's like they beat the Blazers and the Wizards and the Jazz or whatever. I was like, okay, okay. Mike, but, you really had doubts. I know. With Buddy going to go shoot I know. with the greatest shooter of all time. You don't I, think he was going to pick up some tips? I, you know, again, I, am comfortable enough to accept the L that I okay. have earned. I am eating the L because that, yeah, that was dumb. It was a dumb thought process by me. It's not dumb. <laughs> this is where hoop sense is where we talk sense into people. That's right. That's right. right. And we give educational hot takes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? That's right. So now you're learning. I'm learning. I'm learning um, and adjusting. <laughs> also, again, shout outs to Buddy Held and Kyle Anderson. Mm -hmm. They have a great bet you know, uh, acquisition in as far as leadership in that core mm -hmm. and in pods and, you know, like you, you can go down the line as far as the team and the makeup of this team. And, you know, obviously, um, defense, the, the, the tagline, the bumper sticker defense wins championships. Right. It is so true. Defense keeps the warriors in, uh, as contenders. Yeah. You can't count them out when they're healthy and they defend. I mean, we're right. We're like 13 games in now and they're still, they're still out there doing it. And also, I mean, I really hope DeAnthony Melton can stay healthy. Like I feel like he's another defense, like another defender. I know who can also knock down the outside shot when yeah. it comes to him too. Yeah. And I, again, yeah, they very interchangeable team. And you know, we we're making fun of Steve Kerr for playing like 45 guys in his rotation early on. I, it's hard to make fun of him now, you know, 10 and three, he's I doing mean, something right. The one thing you love to criticize a champion. Yeah. But he knows ball. Oh, he knows ball. He's won at every level. Yeah. And uh, Kenny Atkinson credits Steve Kerr for, you know, taking a few things from him mm -hmm. and also taking a few things from other coaches and applying it to, you know, his success. Yeah. You know, and they, Kenny Atkinson, another one who uh, plays a pretty deep bench and like yes. trusts in his bench. And, and yeah, that's and that's worked out well for Cleveland so far this season, too. The Portland Trailblazers. Dude, I can't believe we it went from fire Chonsky <laughs> to like 
Lift them up. Let's, I, let's go. I know, man. They like those back to back wins against Minnesota. I think everybody focused on Minnesota. What's wrong with you? Like, mm -hmm. how did you lose both games to Portland? Yeah. And then you like watch it a little bit closer. You're like, I don't know, man. Maybe Portland's got like a fun identity. Uh, DeAndre Ayton also a part of or uh, not really a part of that three game win streak. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of like figured out their rotation. They've got like an identity. And I and I will talk about him a little D bit. Cling, man. Dewey, I like re legit. And then Robert Williams, another one. Please stay healthy because he's so fun. He's Bubble so fun. rap, Robert. Robert, Robert <laughs> seriously, time seriously. lord. But uh, Scoot's getting a you know getting a little bit better, finding his rhythm. Uh, I know they they're without Anthony Simons for a little bit, but Shade and Sharp, man, and Shade we'll and talk Sharp. about him a little. I won't like give it all away now, mm -hmm. but Shade and Sharp, that is league pass in itself. Like if you need, you're like, oh, I need to watch a West Coast game. Go watch Shade and Sharp play basketball. Why do you think when a good team loses to a struggling team, people say that's a bad loss? versus talking about the team that actually won the game. Yeah, I wonder if it's because like a few nights earlier, I think Portland lost by like 90 or whatever it was. And mm -hmm. so I think we we, we stick to that. Uh, and you, like you were saying, man, just fans, we'd much rather beat somebody down than lift somebody up. Like yeah. it's a psychological thing. Um, but you're right. Like Portland should get a little bit more credit for the basketball they've been playing, especially. And then I think it was like Atlanta the next night that they or after that two game run with the Timberwolves. Um, you have to understand, too. I know everybody's talking the tank for flag thing, but these are still professionals. Mm -hmm. They compete night in, night out. There's no easy wins. Right. There's no easy wins. Somebody, you know, you get a, a hot start and you get behind and you're trying to claw back in. But like that's not going to happen. But there are winnable ball games every night for every team. Mm -hmm. So there is no bad loss, I feel, in yeah. this league. Well, and there's just so much talent in the league right mm -hmm. now, too, that there's no... Like, there's no teams that are clearly out there trying to win four games and four games only. Yeah. You know, everybody's out there, whether they're fighting for their own job, right, mm -hmm. to just continue to be in a rotation. But the, but just in general, there's too much talent in the league for teams to be yeah. that bad. I mean, I know this was not our rundown, but even like last night, we watched uh, Wembenyama lists San Antonio Spurs beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah. Like, you know, there's just at any given night. Any given night, somebody can get a win. That's right. Yeah. Um, my Orlando Magic, man. Let's go. You see him? Dude, I they they Do won't you lose. see him. <laughs> you know, y'all know I got the last spot of the show. So we, you know, we're gonna talk about my boys. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it don't even matter. So we good. But the New York Knicks, I got a chance to go to the garden and watch them against the Washington Wizards. Mm -hmm. Um, not the best I you know, not the best game to observe and kind of give critique about, but the takeaway from that game was the confidence of Jericho Sims. Yeah. Also the ball movement. And then like Josh Hart, he's, he's been good he, for them. He got off to a little bit of a slow start, right? Mm -hmm. People were getting nervous and I, there's no need to be nervous about Josh Hart. Josh Hart's going to be out there and he's, no one's going to play, play hard. hard. Yeah. And he, you're right. He's strung together like a couple of pretty good games. And also, yeah, give Jericho Sims some love, right? Yeah. Because I, I think there was a uh, real concern that not only did Knicks fans maybe not trust Jericho, but neither did Thibodeau. And then Cat found himself in some foul trouble. And then they didn't have to go back to Cat because Jericho just kept balling down the stretch. Uh, and they need that. They are so desperate for that. Any sort of like interior defensive presence. Because I think that's the only thing lacking right now from New York, right? It's just... The defense is kind of weird, but their offense is on fire. I feel like Tibbs has a nice flow, too. He's mm -hmm. allowing Cat to get it going the first three quarters and then Jalen Brunson closes. Yeah. And that's I feel like that's the right thing to do, you know what I mean, in, mm -hmm. that, in that way. And then you got guys like Campaign who has confidence and Mikael still trying to find his way on the offensive end but defending the best player on the other end. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just, you know, just kind of – Check check the board of like you know who's ready next man up. Type yeah, thing. and well, and if you have Jalen Brunson and Cat both performing at a high level, you kind of only need one of those other three guys to pop in a given game, yep. and that's good to know that you have like your options are Hart, OG, um, Deuce McBride. OG's been good. OG has been good. Man. OG's been good. He's been their best defensive they're, they're players. They're on front court, yeah. and OG's stepping up. He's been yeah, he's solid. I'm really excited to see what they do when they get Mitchell Robinson back. Yeah, and uh, he's another one, man. Like, just please stay healthy because he's he's so dominant inside. Yeah. Like, he can be so dominant. Well, we'll also get to see Cat in the at the four on the east on yeah. the eastern in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Also, man, Cat's been awesome. It's been Cat's awesome. been awesome. Like I again, I Cat's someone I feel like people enjoy dunking on. You know, like that mm -hmm. uh, on social media, or whatever. Yeah. He uh, you can't right now, and people, he's, he's a good offensive player. He's been, I think the thing is is the big question mark. Is going to be the Knicks defense. Right. Defense and bench. Mm -hmm. They can solve, get one of them. Yep. 
they can, okay. they can, they can, they'll be okay. Yeah. I'm Again, I made the hot take about them being uh, top five in uh, in the league, mm -hmm. not just the East, but top five in the league. I think they're still capable of doing that once they like kind of get their principles down. And they're a team all, almost similar to Dallas last year, where I don't need them to be like a two seed heading into the playoffs. Like you get them in a playoff series, I'm pretty comfortable whether they're like a two seed or a six seed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, they're they're going to be a tough playoff team. Man, it's time for next man up. All right. Yeah, nah, with, with the 25th pick, we got uh, Pacomi, uh, Daddy, uh, that the Diet, the Diet. Pacomi, the, the diet. diet. Yeah. It's like when you eat healthy, you know, you're on the diet. Yeah, exactly. The Diet. Like, nah, I'm on the diet. Like, yo, yo, yo Pacom Daddy. Okay, all right. Pacom Daddy, next. Pacom <laughs> Daddy. Speaking of the Knicks, um, Tibbs is letting them play in these uh, blowout games, allowing him to get his confidence up. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you think about? Oh, I love yeah. that they're giving, like you were just saying with the bench, right? They mm -hmm. need they need to find someone to step up. And yeah. the fact that he's given a run, and you know Tibbs, man, if you win over Tibbs, mm -hmm. if Tibbs trusts you, those minutes are going to keep coming, yeah. right? He's not going to be shy giving you minutes. So it's good. I mean, again, they're just so desperate for for some bench play. And yeah. So it's good to I see. mean, his confidence is there. He's knocking down a three-point shot, mm -hmm. and that's going to continue to improve um, and find different ways to, to stay on the floor and crack their rotation. But yeah. Really, really good to see him. You know, uh, in the Wizards game, he looked really good. Yeah. Um, and those are those are things that we'll we'll watch throughout the season to see if he is the next man up. Yeah. And if like they ever need to get like they need to be able to give some of their guys a rest at some point too. And Tibbs won't do that unless they he has guys he can trust that can step up into those spots. So, yeah, it's good that he's getting some run right now. Mike, how's your TikTok dancing? My TikTok dancing is not as good as Jerry McCain. I'll but tell you that right now. <laughs> I know Jerry McCain can shoot the blood out the ball. My God, I, I'm so impressed with McCain. I knew he could shoot. And I was like, I'm sure, you know, he'll come in, play a handful of minutes, knock some jumpers down. But he has been awesome. And like the way, I'm sure, I don't know if you saw the clip or we're just watching the game, but he had a little stiff in him. And the way that he, you know, moving without the ball, mm -hmm. like, move, like gets rid of the ball and then kind of finds a new spot, relocates, mm -hmm. knocks down a three. Like, man, he's been cooking. He has the most points per game by a rookie since Michael Jordan. Wow. That's a good stat. Last good five stat. last five games. Wow. Last five games, he's averaging 27.7. Man, and that is truly the only bright spot in Philly right now. Yes. Like, it is. They need, it's like the only light in the darkness of the 70s. Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, man. I know, but he was hurt, too. We yeah. were like, without Maxey for a couple weeks. Yeah. But I think he actually might be back tonight, which is good for them. Well, I hope that Jerry McCain can continue to play well, continue mm -hmm. to keep his confidence as they continue to figure things out in Philadelphia. But man, dude, that kid is good. He's fun to watch. He's right now number one in uh, rookie rankings. Yeah. we got, well, Somebody last night had something to say about oh, that. Oh, we're going to talk about him too. We're going <laughs> to talk about him too. You mentioned you, uh, you, you, you kind of highlighted a little bit earlier about Shaden Sharp. Dude, Shaden Sharp had back-to-back uh, -back 30 point games. He, he was someone I got hurt last season and then was hurt at the beginning of this season. And I actually didn't think we we're going to see him until like the new year. So it was good to see that he was back as mm -hmm. soon as he was that game. Uh, they, uh, they played Atlanta close and, and I think he's got three games in a row with three triples, three, three pointers in each mm -hmm. game. And I think what makes him so dangerous and this is what I was going to point out with the Atlanta game is if he's knocking down a three point, like his three point shot is consistent. He's so freaking athletic mm -hmm. that you can't like, if you have to start closing out on this guy, bang, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone knocking it down. Also here, ready for a little hot take. He's winning the dunk contest this year. He's what? Is that not a hot take? That's not a hot take. Can I give I, a cold take? Is he in it yet? I, no, but I no. So that's why it's hot. We okay. don't even know if he's okay. in it. So there we go. Yeah. yeah we well, had to yeah, get that. Yeah. Cause you know, we don't do hot takes. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. My bad. Okay. My bad. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm, okay. It was a sens sensible take that he was going to win the dunk contest. But he's awesome, man. And I also think that, like, Loki takes some pressure off Scoot as he's finding his way mm -hmm. to have another guy in the backcourt. And again, it just goes back to the identity of the Trailblazers. They've got now, like, their, it's kind of like we were talking about with Detroit, like a, a young core that mm -hmm. they can kind of figure stuff out with. And he's fun, man. He's just, he's league pass worthy, Shane Sharp. Last big man standing in Charlotte. Yeah. Musa, I, I don't even know if I can pronounce the last name, so I should have looked that up before we did this. Song. Musa Diabate? Diabate. All right, all right. Uh, he, yeah, Charlotte, We, I think we mentioned Taj Gibson was starting for the Hornets for a little bit. They're without Nick Richards. They're without Mark Williams. And he's been doing a little bit of work down low. He's been back-to-back double-doubles when mm -hmm. Charlotte's been so desperate for any sort of size. Mm -hmm. 
So just give him a little love. Give little Musa a little love. And the words are sugar free. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Ochai Ab Ab Abaji. There we go. This is Ooh, good. I'm never see, I had to. I, I was working hard on that one, man. You know, this is hoop sense. We take time to learn the player's name. That's right. We're not going to butcher your name. We're going to get it right. So Ochai Abaji. There we go. He's been to Toronto again, like just looking for any sort of bright spots they can. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Because he was in Utah and kind of couldn't really find his way, right? Or wasn't given enough like runway to find his yep. way. And he's carved out a nice little role for himself in Toronto. And they are going to need him. Yeah. They're going to need him. They're definitely going to need him. But, you know, again, Toronto, young court, mm -hmm. really, really good. Yeah. Let's move on to the high hand. Let's do it. Jalen Williams. Dude, Jalen Williams has been incredible this entire season. He's averaging over two steals a game. I feel like we'd be talking more about him as a defensive like juggernaut if it wasn't for Dyson Daniels, who's got, well, I'm sure we'll talk about it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what I thought was incredible about J-Dub, right? They, they lose Isaiah Hartenstein. Then Chet Holmgren goes down with that brutal injury. And it's like, oh, well, what big are they going to use? And they're like, none. We're going to have J-Dub play the five. And he's just been great for them. And I know they've like dropped a couple of games. One to, uh, was it Gold? No, Dallas, I think they lost to. And then uh, last night to San Antonio. But he's just filling it up. He'll do everything. He'll get 25 points. Fine, I can do that. Uh, double digit assists. Fine, I can do that. Like he, he can bring so much to that team. Uh, and just, again, like ha to... Not to give him a Batman and Robin, but for Shea to have another guy that he can lean on that can like bring it e each and every night. I think J Dub's been awesome. And J Dub is a basketball player. Mm -hmm. Whatever you ask of him, he's going to get it done. Yeah. And I think most NBA players should take notes mm -hmm. and just figure it out. It's mm -hmm. not about playing out of position, it's about doing what's best for the team. Yeah. And right now, the front court is very thin. And he stepped up and he's playing out of position, but getting it done. Yeah, I actually saw somebody who uh, talks about fantasy basketball posted something that Jalen Williams has uh, positional eligibility at uh, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. <laughs> That's What wild. a flex. Yeah, right? Man, <laughs> high hand. LeBron James at 39.5. 39.5, because he's going to be 40 December 30th. Yeah, I think 0.5 is yeah. generous. 0.5, <laughs> yeah, he might be 0.9. Yeah. It's 0 .35, 0 0.9. I'm close to yeah, so me too. 40 soon. So. Me too. Um, man, triple doubles. You know, like this dude just, I feel like this is the best version of Brian. IQ wise, smarter, making better decisions. Obviously, everybody loves the athleticism. They love the 2009 LeBron. They love the 2011 LeBron. This is my favorite LeBron because. He's being much smarter. He's not relying on his athleticism as much. Yes, he can still dunk. Yes, he can still make some blocks. But he's not forcing the game as much. Right. He's, a, he's able. He has a, a good supporting cast and Anthony Davis, Reeves, and Connect. Mm -hmm. So those guys have been stepping up for him. I still think the Lakers need one more player. But yeah. the things that LeBron have been able to do at this age is very impressive. They don't call him the uh, the GOAT for a reason. Right. You know what I mean? Debatable GOAT. Yeah, but debatable. you know what I mean? Uh, they don't call him that. That the name is not used like loosely used. You know what I mean, and it's respected. Yeah, I, I I'm so impressed by it too. Because again, I anything that I do at this age, uh, I'm always reminded what he's doing at his age, and it's not the same. Oh. <laughs> it's not the same. Oh, but I, but I'm with you. I, I worked out yesterday, and I said I can't do it tomorrow. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> yeah, no way, no way. But to see, uh, to see him, like you were saying, this this role for him is kind of fun, and it feels like the role that we thought we were going to see from him like a couple years ago when AD got there, that they were going to like totally turn the keys over. Mm. And it seems like it's a less taxing ver version yeah. of basketball for him too. That's going to keep him healthier uh, throughout the season. And I mean, yeah, it, I feel like he's on pace to lead. I mean, he won't because of what Trey Young's probably doing, but mm. lead the league in assists. Like mm. I feel like every single night, I think he had 12 dimes last night. Like he's just constantly getting everybody else involved. Uh, yeah, they. I did not want to give the Lakers any love because my my Celtics uh, mm -hmm. fandom just kind of burst through. But they they really have been a tough basketball team. All credit to the sicko of a coach they have. That's, that's right. To you, bro. Grady Dick. He's a bucket. <laughs> Listen, ten, most improved. Yeah, you think so? Ten ten point five point increase. Yeah, it, that's a jump. 
It is a jump. And you know what? I like, I'll be honest. I didn't watch it. T- I wasn't grinding the Grady Dick tape uh, in the offseason. I kind of assumed, I was like, oh yeah, he's got a three point shot. Like we'll see him, we'll see him knock down some jumpers. He's like attacking the rim in a way that I, I didn't expect to see. Oh, uh, that's what he do though. Yeah. He, he's, that's what he does. Yeah. I got a chance to watch him in high school. That's what he do. Yeah. He, I very, way, I didn't give him enough credit for, for his uh, athleticism or like how he could, just, just slash and cut. And yeah, he, Kansas got some hoopers. Yeah, Kansas has some hoopers. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dyson Daniels. Dude. I mean, I, I don't even know where to start. Plus 9.5 point increase, most steals and blocks per game by a guard in a season. And only Wimby has more steals and blocks this season than him. He had four consecutive games of six or more steals. I mean, that's, that's like Scotty Pippen stuff. Cookie Monster. Right? That's a great nickname. Did you just. I just off the dome off right the there. Dome. And April. I don't know if I can give him that though. I think somebody else probably. Somebody got it. All right. We got to figure it out. All right. That's like Daniels. It. We got to we got to associate it with uh, Australia. Okay. So. Okay. We'll, we'll get there. All right. We'll workshop some stuff. Yeah, we'll workshop. Some Man, stuff. I I'm feeling bad for, and I know we're going to talk about New Orleans here in a little bit, but you just look at that trade. Forget all the other assets that mm-hmm. were involved, and I know Dejounte's hurt, so it's not really fair to compare. Yeah. But what Dyson's doing right now. Yeah, I mean it's it's easy to kick a team down when they're. I uh, know you're you right. Know, you're right. And I think it's going to work out for both of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, Dejounte's going to be uh, an asset to that team for sure. Back, but then also you know Dyson's just been been great. I mean I think the idea of it is uh, you know uplifting the Hawks. You mm-hmm. know everybody was like, oh the Hawks are going to be you know not good and yeah, Trey's left alone. Let's find a trade partner to get Trey there. Like no, they're bumping over there. Yeah, and I like I. I knew Dyson was a lockdown defender. Like, mm-hmm. I knew that was his, like, bread and butter. But he's had, like, a, a multiple games again, 20-plus points. Yeah. Like, he's been doing a little bit of everything. Confidence is high. Yeah. The roof. Absolutely. That's something you can't coach, and good for him. Yeah, it's fun to see. Uh, Jason Tatum. Dude, Tatum, I, like, normally I wouldn't put guys at, like, his caliber in this category of what we're doing here, although we put LeBron in there, so I guess we can do it. He's uh, career average. I mean, I'm sorry, he's having – season at like his season highs are way above his career averages mm-hmm. like he's averaging six more points a game i think it's an extra two rebounds or 1.5 rebounds and same thing with assists too and he's just and i know we mentioned in the last episode there's a different presence in him right mm-hmm. now and i don't know if it's just like i won a championship got that off my back uh but he just seems so comfortable and you saw it last night in that game against cleveland who fi- also shouts to cleveland for going this long without getting the l that's mm-hmm. Incredible. But Tatum last night, like, just can do everything. Like, if you're going to throw doubles at him, that's fine. He'll get, like, six or seven assists in a game. He's The three ball looks good. The shot looks nice. So Tatum has just been – he's been awesome. 29.9, 8, and 6. Yeah. That's MVP level. It stuff. really is. Oh, man, he's bumping. He is. He feel, He looks good. He feels like the, the confident – we're talking about Dyson being confident. I mean, Tatum, too. Tatum seems – like there was even a play last night where he gave a he gave Mitchell a little bit of a shoulder and yeah. sent him to the ground. I'm like I don't I don't remember that Tatum. I don't remember tough Tatum. Nah, like that. he's there, man. He, yeah. Like again, he's tired of the disrespect, mm-hmm. and you know I think the Olympics really lit a fire under him. And again, yeah. he's on a mission. It is now time for our thirty second timeout. <sighs> we got a couple of them. We got a couple <laughs> of them. Ryan Dunn is shooting sixteen point seven percent from the free throw line. Now again. At Virginia, didn't shoot the free throw that well. No, but 16%. 16% for an athletic position. Yeah. That's yeah, it's not Shaq. It's like, not <laughs> yeah, it's not Shaq. It's not a it's not a it's not a big man whose hands are too big. Right. That, What's what what can what can we do to fix his free throw percentage? I I feel like it's gotta be more upstairs than in mechanics, right? I would guess. Like I I feel like once you get into one of those bad rhythms, you're almost stepping up to the line being like, oh man, is this gonna go down to 14% after this trip? Right. Like, does that thought get in? Because there's no way he's this poor of a free throw. I mean, 60% is wild. I mean, the guys love him. I mean, that's the thing. They understand he's he's putting the work in 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 those situations. I I had a few suggestions. Work out with Devin Booker, he's shooting 88%. It's pretty good. Kevin Durant, 85, 86%, yeah. you know, the high 80s. Get with those guys. Just shoot free throws. Shoot a lot. And I'm not saying that he doesn't because all pros work on their sure. craft and they're trying to get better. Um, like you said, it may be a mental thing. You get a shot doctor, Dr. Phil out in Arizona. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shouts to Dr. Phil. He works with Dame and, and a few others. Um, could get that thing right. Um, and, yeah, and more so just um, on the mental psychology part of, you know, 
tackling that 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 part of the game for him. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be that. There's no way it stays this low. Like it's he's going to figure it out. He's a good ball player. Name this player. 111 three point attempts, and he's shooting 28 percent. Man, Tyrese Halliburton, what's going on? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, it's bumming me out too because he's so fun when he's uh, flying up and down the court and that that whole offense just kind of and they're still like at least they're getting boost from Benedict Matherin this mm -hmm. year who's been has been really good for them but if Halliburton's not going to be able to knock down these threes because what's happening now defenses don't have to push up on him and so you're seeing his assist numbers come down it slows the offense down a little bit more so he I mean to his credit He's still taking them, mm -hmm. uh, but he he is not making them right now. There's some there are some ugly numbers uh, right now for Hallie. I don't know. Do you think you think this is just like small sample size? Everything's going to be fine, or uh, is this a a long? Well, the good issue? thing is, I guess being a basketball player, you have to have shooters amnesia. True. Some games you're gonna get hot. Some mm -hmm. games you're not. And right now he's not. He's gonna find it eventually, but he's gonna keep shooting it too because he's the face of the team. Yeah. So. I mean, well, they need them. Yeah. I mean, the front court's very thin. They got to win the other night. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a, a must win. Yeah. Um, so they can't really afford to lose. And, you know, as long as they can still end up with a W, it doesn't matter if he goes eight for 32 or, right. you know what I mean, 16 for 18. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day, we're, we're not watching the stats. But again, we would love to see you yes. be the young man in the three. That's what we're looking for. Shout out the, young the, the young men in three. <laughs> now we're talking teams. The teams need a timeout. Yes. New Orleans Pelicans, four and 10, two and eight in their last 10. They just signed Elford Payton. I don't know where they found him at, but shout out to Elford Payton. Back in the way. Um, I remember um, wanting the Bulls to draft Elford Payton. I was like pushing for it. Yeah. Big fan of him. He was know? a sneaky little triple double guy too. Like yeah. he I mean, not with volume, but he he'd fill it up. He'd fill it up. So he he's back in his home state. They signed him because the roster's thin. They've mm -hmm. been dealing with injuries. You, know, you got Zion out. You got uh DeJounte Murray. Yeah, take the scroll out. There's I more mean, and more. Yeah, they it, finally it, got Trey Murphy back. Got Trey nice. Murphy back. You know, they had the Jose Alvarado injury. Herb Jones. Herb Jones. C it just, CJ, right? CJ, CJ, you know what I mean? So um yeah. a lot. I feel bad for Willie Green. I do too. Cause I think he's a good coach. Yeah, I, do I don't, think Willie Green. I, I hope that he's not on the hot seat. No, he this. shouldn't be. No. He shouldn't be. But yeah, they it's just so unlucky. Like this is I, I don't know what is this year like six seven of this where they have this like core roster that on paper makes a ton of sense mm -hmm. and they make a run every couple of years that makes us believe that they could do some damage if they could stay healthy but man the zion thing stinks turn injuries off i know seriously like i i just want to watch this guy play he's so he's so fun i mean what he was doing at the tail end of last season was just like you, people were getting drunk off it like it was just awesome watching him play like that and now we can't get them for more than like three consecutive quarters. What do you think is the next solution for this roster? Like, you know, they're in bad shape. Yeah, I mean, you, you're waving the Cooper flag. I think that's what you're okay. doing right now. I because I do they make any trades? I don't even know. Like the the Ingram contract is so big, and that seems to be like the one piece that you would move off of. And I think maybe if they, you know, we check back in a month from now, and if they kind of can string some wins together maybe they start looking at some at some moves to get competitive but like i don't even know what do you do with mccullum and murray yeah i don't it's tough because we haven't even seen them play together yeah right what do they they murray get hurt in the first game second game i know uh, yeah second, second game, game i think yeah so like we haven't even seen and i'm sure that's what the front office is saying it's like well we built this team we just haven't seen it yet yeah but you're running out of time i mean four and eleven do you think they make you think they make a move i think they do yeah i think in a matter of time I do you think, think they make a move to get better or to position themselves better? No, next year? no, I don't. I think they're positioning them for just kind of dump some contracts. Yeah. Just make it make sense because like it's they they've dropped too much. I know. They dropped too much. You know what I mean? Like Wes is too good. Yeah, that I mean, four and ten is that's oh, crazy. Unless everybody get the injury, which it seems like a lot of injuries have happened this season. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, everybody was Oh, Kawhi Leonard and ah, ha, ha, you know, yeah. and it, now it's everybody. Everybody's been hurt. So hopefully, you know, the second half of the season, teams get healthier. Um, I don't count them out, man, because like, you know, playing, the plan exists. Right, the plan exists. The plan didn't exist. 
you know, start looking for Cancun yeah. early. <laughs> and it's jumbled enough, too, that if you do string together like a couple of weeks, you yeah. you know, you'll chip up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, it's it's not looking good. And they're not playing like fun basketball right now either. I mean, I, it's good to see some guys get run that maybe like Brandon Boston Jr. used to be on the Clippers, now on the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. He's been making good use of his time. Like, yeah. I think he's carving himself out a role because he's given an opportunity. But I don't know if those opportunities are coming with W's anytime soon. Griff has his work cut out for him. Sure does. Sure does. Um, the Philadelphia 76ers. It's too early in the season for not only to be having these kind of team meetings, but then for leaks to happen right after oh, man. The team meetings. Such a bad leak. It's crazy. It, that, and that, I don't, we should say like leak. Like that was so. The leak. Yeah. I mean. That was the leak. Yeah. That was no, there was no better mm. thing for that no and i mean it was like quotes you know what i mean like it wasn't like oh we've heard some rumblings they're like no tyrese maxi said mm-hmm. also you know i i don't know what's going on behind the scenes but i like the idea that maxi could talk to him be i think that I shows mean, I maturity would, i think i think he deserves a right he's all-star mm-hmm. um he has he has something to say as well he's yeah. a part of their plan moving forward so i think you gotta have some type of accountability and like some of those things that were said as far as like Embiid being an hour late and, you know, like it, it sucks to hear as a fan, um, you know, from your from your MVP. Yeah. From your leader, the face of your franchise m- behaving that way. Right. You know what I mean, because, again, this is still a job. You're a professional and there's an expectation and you lead by example. So like, yeah, Jared McCain coming in from Duke and Corona Centennial. And thinking, hey, this is my first NBA experience, and now I got to deal with this. Yeah, or- I was excited to play with a Paul George. I was excited to play with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid and the others. Mm-hmm. And now this is what I have to deal with. Yeah. Or Nick Nurse. Yeah, I, I know. And also, like, even if, if you're McCain, like, maybe you're like, oh, this is just how it goes. This is how it is. And yeah, like, you he, can show up late. You can, you know what I mean? And that's not. I don't I don't think so. I no. think I think he's still going to do what he needs to do. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know I mean? But when you see, like, leadership setting that example. I think that I think that Duke group chat is probably yeah. like, hey, man, this is I, I'm not, it's unfortunate that you got to deal with that. But yeah. that's not the, how the rest of the league works. No. And uh, I, it's funny, the conversation that like or the leads conversation between Maxi and Embiid, it sounded more more like uh like a significant other relationship type mm-hmm. conversation where it's like hey i need you to be present yeah i need you to show up on time i need you to be present and it's just kind of wild that that's the con- it's not x's and o's it's right. not about staying healthy it's about like hey i need you i need you to show us that you care about what we're doing here and i want to listen winning cures all right yeah they they go like six and one in their next seven it's probably not a conversation anymore but two that like they're you were giving the pelicans a tough time Two and eleven, right? I believe they're the Sixers' record right now. Two and eleven. Two wins. Two. It's a, we're a month into the season. They got two. Two wins. wins and Paul, listen, I don't want to tell Paul George to put the mic down. No, it might be time, <laughs> but he might have to kind of stagger it a little bit. Go yeah. biweekly, <laughs> once a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's not looking good. No. You know, even though that doesn't technically affect his game no. i think it's from a um front like a a, a pr standpoint yeah, the optics. like the optics yeah yeah because it seems like you know you, you you're still talking about the clippers you're still yeah you know you're not playing yeah. as well he's averaging 14 points a game yeah when the, the that quote that was going around about like the b team thing with the clippers i was like why are we ta- why are we talking about this right now like we're it's November. Hey, let's let's hoop. I think it's. I think that's just how it works. Yeah, I'm. I'm still rooting for Paul George. Of I course. still believe that Paul George is, you know, a good player. Oh, absolutely. I think that there is a lot of other things going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And for him to sign with the, you know, 76ers and have potentially maybe came in and thinking like, oh, this is gonna be a breeze. Mm-hmm. It's not a breeze. It's not. You look. You know, you're looking for air conditioning in this hot sun. Right. right. Now. And, you know, I, I'm thinking back to us talking about Buddy at the top of the show mm-hmm. and Buddy, like, struggling in Philly and then going to Golden State to flourish. Like, you know, maybe there's some maybe there's some environment stuff going on in Philly that needs to get itself sorted out. So, right now, 13 games in, what are you doing for the next five to fix Philly? To fix Philly? I mean, they need... Like, Embiid's been on the floor for the last two games, I think, right? Or he's mm-hmm. played two full games, and he doesn't look like Embiid. He looks like a shell of himself right now. 
Uh, and I don't know, may, and like maybe that's just like playing his way into, I don't want to say shape like he's out of shape, but, you know, coming back from injury, trying to mm -hmm. feel comfortable again. They need to establish that he still can be the guy. And like, like I, they still haven't played a game with Maxi and Bede and Paul George. And Maxi's questionable for tonight. Maybe he comes back. Um, but I, I think they just need to get some rhythm and flow of like their core guys playing together. Even if it comes in a couple more losses, yep. they just need their guys out. There. Absolutely. And if you want to be glass half full, like we might not have seen McCain do what he's doing without the situation that's going on there and these injuries. And now you've learned this rookie can hang and he can play now. Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, glass half full. I mean, he'll, he, he'll get the reps. I think the thing is also um, from what I see, on how to move forward from this. You have that real, uh, that moment where you say, what team are we going to be and what's the expectations moving into December, January, February? Are we bottoming out? Right. Do we give young guys a chance to get looks and things of that nature? We shut and be down and let him get fully healthy. Yeah. Do we, you know, play Paul George and probably limit the back-to-backs and things of that nature because obviously he came back from an injury and then things just kind of like unraveled. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is just being monitoring Tyrese Maxey's minutes as well because like there's a health issue. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't I don't think they could, I don't think a trade could actually shift this culture right now. I think no. the thing is, is one thing at a time and chip away and see if they can make a good swing. Um ladder like as far as late december right early january and try to get something going but i'm with you i like it's not a trade like it's not talent's not the yeah. issue like, i mean most people start firing up the trade machine and that's not how the game works no. i think it's it takes time when you get new players you yeah. know what i mean like sure it, it you know however you feel about paul george paul george is still paul george absolutely and it takes time for the for the core to get it to go get yeah. it going and they haven't like had a training camp really together because like there's been just so many different injuries. I know Paul was playing for the most part, but like Embiid again, Embiid's played like a total of 50 minutes so far this season. I will say players only meetings don't work. Yeah, no, I mean they never work. I've never heard someone. I've never heard a season turn around because the coaches left the locker room and the players had a players only meeting. Like I've never heard of that actually. Great work. advertising. Yeah, it sounds good. Great advertising. <laughs> Like, I'm going to leave and they're going to get it together. Yeah. And you got that one person like, come on, guys. Yeah. He really believes in us. And you know what? We're going to turn this around. We got to play hard for him. We got to have some pride. Those guys are so rich. No, nah, that's too many sports movies. That's yeah. all that is. That's like, yeah. we've seen too many scenes it's from sports the water, movies. Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about the player of the game. Player of the game. Dog connect, man. Dude, that was, I was awesome. And again, I'm not a Lakers fan. That was awesome. 37 points he's averaging right now after five games 20.4 per game field goal percentage shooting 66 percent shooting 66 from the three shouts the lakers and all parties involved because there's more than there's more than the organization <laughs> but i'm gonna give the lakers a shout out on the development yeah you know what i mean lebron said you know everybody thinks he's lying you know, he knows talent. That was great. I'm still trying to figure out how Dalton fell to 16. It was no business for 17. him. 17. Yeah. Him and Jared McCain. Yeah, no but business. They lucked up. Shout to, you know, scouting and all those things. And JJ drawing up the right sets for him to succeed. And he believes in him and he wants him to shoot the ball. And from what I'm hearing, Dalton Connect is a gym rat. Loves it. Wants to be better. Wants to be the great. At this, I'm claiming it now. It is a white boy winter. <laughs> like, it's a white boy winter. Him and him and Austin? Him and Austin. White boy winter. Brady <laughs> Dick. Throw them all in there. White boy winter. Winter's coming. Jon Snow. All that stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like that's a t-shirt. I think white boy winter is a t-shirt. White boy winter. I think we need it. Uh, yeah, man. The Dalton Connect thing last night against Utah, for those that didn't see it, I'm sure you've seen the clips by now. I mean, the first one goes down in the third quarter, and you're like, oh, nice. It was a good pull by Dalton Connect. And they go right back to him the same exact spot. The second second one goes down. And then it felt like we were seeing something we had seen so many times before. From Like it felt lived in, right? We're like, oh, you got to get the ball back to Dalton. And then he hits a third one. Mm -hmm. And the crowd is just going nuts. And there's going to be something like for him being just like this young rookie, and he's got LeBron in his ear 
passing him the ball, being like, get that shot up. Like that must be such a surreal experience that the goat or the debatable goat, the second goat, whatever you want to say, is throwing you dimes and you're knocking down triples like in your first month in the NBA uh, and having the the crypto center, whatever it's called, like losing their mind as he goes nuts. It was fun. Free idea. Connect for purple and yellow, uh, you know, pieces. Connect for. Let's get it out there by January. Let's get the collab going. <laughs> Dalton, make sure you send us one if that happens. Yeah, that's all we ask. Chris Paul. Dude, Chris, I, and I, we talked about the San Antonio OKC game. Chris Paul, like, there was a really cool moment at the end of that game when the Spurs get this win in the in the cup game. And without Wembenyama, and Chris Paul is a pretty good game. I think he had like 14 points and 10 assists or 11 assists. But there was a cool moment at the end of the game. Keldon Johnson, like everybody, you know, they're exchanging jerseys. Everybody's dapping up. Uh, Keldon Johnson kind of pulls Chris Paul aside, like goes out of his way. And, you know, obviously I don't know what he said, but it felt like a moment of being like, thank you. Like, you know, they've just, you bring in somebody who like, you can't be a tanking losing team with Chris Paul on your team. Like he's the ultimate floor raiser. He's making it like Keldon Johnson was out there balling last night. Castle, the rookie has been like really making strides this season. And for them to get that win, he hit this insane three in this game too. Where he had got, yeah, I think it was, uh, it was, I think it was Caruso just draped all over him. Hits this like, you know, that Patton and Chris Paul step back, knocks down the three, and it was just, it's just crazy to see him still doing it at this age, at that high level. But it's cool. It, it reminds me of like the OKC team that he was on, when they were like, oh, they're gonna tank, they'll be terrible, and he's like, no, nah, you can't, you just can't tank with Chris Paul. He's gonna win you games. Yeah, man. I mean, Chris Paul something about his leadership, mm -hmm. you know, you might not like him as a player when you play, you know, when your teams play against him, but Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook on young teams, amazing leaders, amazing pros. They understand the game. They know how to teach other young stars how to become stars in this league. And it just shows the testament, you know, obviously Coach Pop is off the sideline right now and Chris Paul stepping in and becoming that player coach. Yeah. It'd be interesting if this is my educational hot take. Here we go. That Chris Paul becomes the head coach of the Spurs. I love this take. Right? I love this take. Yeah. Like Ends his career, takes the seat, you know, already has a relationship with the young guys. Yeah. And, and, and comes in and replaces Coach Pop. I love this. This is a great take. Okay. I like it. That's a good one. Well, uh, you know what time it is. <laughs> Put my jersey on. Come on. You can go ahead and say what you're going to say as I get ready. No, no, we can't. We can't. There's nothing to be said except it's time for the magic minute, baby. Man, you know it's the magic <laughs> minute and we came with a jersey. I'm sorry if I'm hitting the mic, but I'm excited to talk about my Orlando magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Quinn Richardson, too. This is a Quinn Richardson jersey, it's not great, a Paolo Banchero. But we definitely need it, Orlando. If, yeah, you see, this is this is throwback. We got the, the Adidas logo wow. on here. You know what I mean? So, um, man, I don't even, Franz Wagner, <laughs> dog. Franz Wagner is averaging 29 points per game, six rebounds, six assists, 40, 30, 80. That's crazy. We starting the Franz All-Star campaign now. We got MV Paolo and we got All-Star Franz starting up now. You know what I mean? Anthony Black has been great locking up defenders. He had 20 points the other night. Six-game winning streak, protect the house. You know what I mean? The Magic Kingdom is protected. <laughs> Home cooking. And also, first time since 2018 to hold opponents to less than 100 points for six straight games. Coach Mosley and Paolo are, have been very instrumental in the huddles, talking to everybody, making sure everybody's on their P's and Q's, locking up, you know what I mean? Ball me, man, amoeba, whatever you need, diving for the rock. Bring on the Celtics, Mike. <laughs> Bring on the Celtics. Make it magic. And I feel inspired right now. That was the, the the momentum was carrying as you as you kept going. Dude, Franz has been incredible, but the thing, Orlando, like you just mentioned, the under keeping opponents under 100, that defense is sick. And that's why they're winning these games, right? Without Paolo. But I when they 
like the first two games after losing Paulo, they looked real bad. And I was nervous. I was like, man, Magic are going to really fall off. No, Magic are right there in it. And they're going to all of their role players are going to be better off for uh, better off for it because of the role that they've gotten to take with Paulo being out. And so then Paulo comes back. Everybody's comfortable. Like they've been getting good minutes from uh, the young guy, De Silva. Mm -hmm. He's been playing solid, too. Yeah, man. Magic, Magic are real. I'm really chill with the bring on the Celtics, but uh, bring on the Celtics. <laughs> we match up really well. Yeah, I mean, Suggs, uh, Suggs will defend anyone. Suggs, Suggs has like Russell Westbrook energy, but just on the defensive end. Yeah, he's a dog. Well, this is this is the time that I hate, but it's time for the show to end. <laughs> Mike, you got any shout outs before we get out of here? No, I don't think so. I think we hit everybody we wanted to hit here. Uh, this is great. This is great. Episode two in the books. Yeah. I feel good. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>